The major rock edicts of Indian Emperor Ashoka refer to 14 separate major edicts of Ashoka which are significantly detailed and represent some of the earliest dated rock inscriptions of any Indian monarch. These edicts are preceded chronologically by the minor rock edicts. Ashoka was the third monarch of the Maurya Empire in India, reigning from around 269 BC. Ashoka famously converted to Buddhism and renounced violence soon after being victorious in a gruesome Kalinga war yet filled with deep remorse for the bloodshed of the war. Although he was a major historical figure, little definitive information was known as there were few records of his reign until the 19th century when a large number of his edicts, inscribed on rocks and pillars, were found in India, Nepal, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. In India, places where rock edicts were found are, Kalsi, Uttarakhand, Supra, Maharashtra, Mount Girnar, Gujarat, Yuragudi, Andhra Pradesh, Dali, Odisha, Jagada, Odisha. These many edicts, of which Ashoka's major rock edicts were the first and most impressive, were concerned with practical instructions. In running a kingdom such as the design of irrigation systems and descriptions of Ashoka's beliefs in peaceful moral behavior. They contain little personal detail about his life. The major rock edicts are very generally attributed to Ashoka. Strictly speaking though, the inscriptions of the major rock edicts, just as those of the major pillar edicts, are not inscribed in the name of Ashoka, but in the name of Devanampriya. Devanampriya Priyadasi or Devanampriya Priyadasi Raja. This title also appears in Greek in the Kandahar bilingual rock inscription, when naming the author of the proclamation as Beta Alpha Sigma Iota Lambda Epsilon Sigma Pi Iota Omicron Delta Alpha Sigma Sigma Eta Sigma, and in Aramaic in the same inscription as our Lord, King Priyadasan. The association of the major inscriptions with Ashoka is only a reconstruction based on the 3rd-4th century CE de Pavamsa which associates the name Ashoka with the name Priyadarsi. And an extrapolation based on the fact that the name Ashoka appears with the title Devanampriya in a few of the minor rock edicts. Christopher Beckwith has suggested that Priyadarsi was a king in his own right, probably the son of Chandragupta Maurya known to the Greeks as Amitrakets, and Ashoka was either just a Buddhist legend or a much later king who authored the Buddhist minor rock edicts around the 1st century CE. Conversely, the major rock edicts in the name of King Priyadasi do not have a clear Buddhist character. Being mainly codes of conduct gathered under the name of Dharma in Greek and truth in Aramaic in the Kandahar bilingual rock inscription, and never mentioning Buddhism, the Buddha or the Sama. The Dali major rock inscription of Ashoka. The front is shaped as an elephant. Dali, Porta Districts, India. The major rock edits of Ashoka include, the Kandahar Greek Edict of Ashoka is a portion of a major rock edict in Greek recovered in Kandahar, Afghanistan, in 1963. Amtiako Yona Raja, mentioned in Major Rock Edict No. 2, here at Girnar, Gujarat, India. Brahmi script. Three languages and four scripts were used. The edicts in the Indian language are composed in non-standardized and archaic forms of Prakrit. Prakrit inscriptions were written in Brahmi and Karasti scripts, which even a commoner could read and understand, the inscriptions found in the area of Pakistan using in the Karasti script. A few northern edicts are written in the Greek language, using very standardized Greek script, or in the Aramaic language, using the Aramaic script. The Kandahar rock inscription is bilingual Greek-Aramaic. The Kandahar Greek edict of Ashoka is in Greek only, and originally probably contained all the major rock edicts 1-14. Ashoka's edicts were the first written inscriptions in India after the ancient city of Harappa fell to ruin. Several authors have pointed out that the major rock edicts do not have a very strong Buddhist flavor, in particular compared to the minor rock edicts. The subject of the major rock edicts is the Dharma, which is essentially described as a corpus of moral and social values, compassion, liberality, truthfulness, purity, gentleness, goodness, few sins, many virtuous deeds, and neither the Buddha, nor the Sama, nor Buddhism are ever mentioned. The only likely mention of Buddhism only appears with the words Hermanas, who are always mentioned next to Brahmanas, in what appears as a rather neutral enumeration of the major religious actors of the period. In the twelfth major rock edict, Ashoka also claims to be honoring all sects. In major rock edict no. 8 though, Ashoka unambiguously describes his pilgrimage to Sambodhi, another name of Bodh Gaya, the location of the Buddha's awakening. Ashoka also repeatedly condemns ceremonies and sacrifices, an apparent attack on Brahmanism. In the major rock edicts Ashoka also expresses his belief in karma and rebirth, 
affirming that good deeds would be rewarded in this life and the next, in heaven. Overall, according to Christopher I. Beckwith, the author of the Major Rock Edicts probably adhered to an early, pietistic, popular form of Buddhism. The Major Rock Edicts of Ashoka are inscribed on large rocks, except for the Kandahar version in Greek, written on a stone plaque belonging to a building. The major edicts are not located in the heartland of Mauryan territory, traditionally centered on Bihar, but on the frontiers of the territory controlled by Ashoka. There are altogether 14 major rocks edicts, forming a group which is duplicated with only slight variations in 10 known locations, and two separate major rock edicts, in Dali and Jagata. Ashoka's prohibition of festivals and respect of animal life. Ashoka's providing of medical services, for human and animals, as well as herbs and fruit plants, to kings on his borders, including Hellenistic kings. Rules of morality and their implementation through civil servants. Rules of morality. Establishment and role of the Mahamatras. Ashoka management of government affairs. The importance of self-control, purity of mind, gratitude, and firm devotion. The diamond throne built by Ashoka in Bodh Gaya. Morality tours by Ashoka. This edict is remarkable in that it describes the visit of the king to Sambodhi, another name of Bodh Gaya. It is thought that Ashoka built in Bodh Gaya the diamond throne, in order to mark the place where the Buddha reached enlightenment. According to tradition, Ashoka was profoundly grieved when he discovered that the sacred pipal tree was not properly being taken care of and dying out due to the neglect of Queen Tissairoxida. As a consequence, Ashoka endeavored to take care of the Bodhi tree, and built a temple around it. This temple became the center of Bodh Gaya. A sculpture at Sanchi, southern gateway of Stupa No. 1, shows Ashoka in grief being supported by his two queens. Then the relief above shows the Bodhi tree prospering inside its new temple. Numerous other sculptures at Sanchi show scenes of devotion towards the Bodhi tree, and the Bodhi tree inside its temple at Bodh Gaya. The Kalsi version also uses the title Devanampriyas to describe previous kings, suggesting that the title Dinampriya had a rather wide usage and might just have meant king. Morality rather than ceremonies. Strive for merit. Morality courtesy, meritorious deeds. Respect other sects and not take pride in one's own. A Greek translation of Edicts 13 and 14, the Kandahar Greek Edict of Ashoka, was also discovered in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Content, Ashoka's victory in the Kalinga War followed by remorse. Victory of morality in India and among the Greeks, as far as where the Greek kings Antiochus, Ptolemy, Antigonus, Magas and Alexander rule. The kings mentioned in Edict 13 as following the Dharma have been identified with the major Hellenistic rulers of the period, objectives and modalities of inscriptions. In Dali and Jagada, on the east coast of India, in the recently conquered territory of Kalinga, major rock edicts 11-13 were omitted from the normal complement of edicts from 1-14, but two separate edicts were put in their place. The first separate major rock edicts mainly addresses local officials referring to the requirements of a fair judicial system and the system of control established by Ashoka through the Mahamatras, sent from Pataliputra, Ujjain, and Taxila. Chronologically, it seems that the first separate rock edict was actually engraved after the second separate rock edict. The first and second separate edicts seem to have been inscribed at about the same time as the other major rock edicts, in the 13th and 14th years of Ashoka's reign. In Dali and Jagada, on the east coast of India, in the recently conquered territory of Kalinga, Major rock edicts 11 to 13 were omitted, but another separate edict was put in their place. The second separate major rock edict, addressed to the officials of Tozali in the Dali separate edicts and of Samapa in the Jagata versions. The second separate edict asks the local officials to try to convince unconquered bordering tribes that the intentions of Ashoka towards them are benevolent. Thanks for watching.